Welcome to Medical Minute with Mir, and here's your host, Mir Khan. Welcome to Medical Minute with Mir, and I'm your host, Mir Khan. Now, today we have a particularly hot topic for all of you, and I'm not talking about that weather. I'm talking about virally hot. We're going to be talking about Ebola. Ebola is one of the deadliest viruses in the world. Now, normally when we think of viruses, we think of influenza, we think of the swine flu, and we think of the bubonic plague. These viruses, Ebola has a tendency to use your own cells against you. Now, we're going to cut to random facts with Max for more. Hi, I'm nursing assistant Max Lowe. Here's see my credentials? And enough looking, let's get down to action! Ebola is classified as a level 4 pathogen. That's higher than AIDS. That's not just contagious, that's virally hot! Better make sure you wear protection! In the 2 to 21 day incubation period, Ebola gives you enough time to go where you need to go! Better say goodbye to your loved ones! Because with a mortality rate as high as Ebola, you're gonna need it. Now Ebola, that's 90% effective. That kills almost everyone. Ebola attacks every organ and tissue in your body, except for skeletal muscle and bone. But really, who wants that? Too crunchy. Ebola is a perfect parasite because it transforms virtually every part of your body into a digestive slime of viral particles. Seven mysterious particles of Ebola work together as a relentless machine. They consume the body as the virus copies itself. The skin develops red spots, called the chi, which are hemorrhages under the skin. Ebola attacks connective tissue with a particular ferocity. It multiplies a collagen, that's the thing in your lips. Spontaneous rips appear in the skin, and hemorrhagic blood pours from the ribs. The red spots on the skin grow and spread and merge to become huge, spontaneous bruises, and the skin goes soft and pulpy. It tears off at even the slightest touch. Your mouth bleeds, your nose bleeds, your teeth bleed, everything bleeds. You may have a hemispherical stroke in which one whole side of your body becomes paralyzed. Even while the, bo even while the body's internal organs become plugged with coagulated blood. The blood that streams out of the body cannot clot. The blood has been stripped of its clotting factors. If you put runny Ebola blood in a test tube and look at it, you see that the blood is massacred. The blood looks as if, if, as if it's been through an electric blender. It triggers a creeping feeling that spreads throughout the internal organs. The liver bulges up and turns yellow, begins to liquefy, and then cracks apart. The cracks run across the liver and deep inside it. The liver completely dies and goes putrid. The kidneys become jammed with blood clots and dead cells and cease to function. As the kidneys fail, the blood becomes toxic with urine. The spleen turns to a single huge hard blood clot the size of a baseball. That's one big blood clot. You think it would be noticeable? You know, people walking around turning into puddles and all that stuff. Well, actually, that only happens in the last few hours of life. The first 21 days are spent just walking around with minor symptoms. What are these symptoms, you might ask? Well, the symptoms are just like a cold or a flu. You might have a headache or some sniffles. It isn't until later that the serious symptoms start showing up. Like, you lose your mind. You walk around, and you become a zombie. Zombies? Where? Not yet. All fun games until you begin to liquefy. It's never as fun when you turn into a pot. What Ebola does to your cells is disgusting. It literally converts your cells into Ebola. It converts your tissues into Ebola. It converts your organs into Ebola. It converts you into Ebola. Seven. Seven proteins. That's all it is. That's all that's in Ebola. How you think? Seven proteins. That'd be pretty simple. They can figure that out. They can solve that. They can't. They have no idea what to do about those proteins. Do they? No, they don't. Five. That's all it takes. Five. Five individual Ebola particles. That's all you need to become contagious. To be inflicted with Ebola. Five individual particles. Other diseases can take hundreds, thousands, even millions of particles before you become infected. With Ebola, it's five. Now, you're probably sitting there being all scared and wondering, what do we do? Uh, Max, you're the one with all the 
happy medical knowledge, being all certified nursing assistant stuff, help us. How, how, do, we, how do we cure this? Well, what treatments? How do we prevent this? Well, I got some bad news for you. You don't. You can't. They have no official cure or treatment for this. All they do is they can balance some of your electrolytes, give you some more fluids, but that only delays it. Actually, that's not entirely true. There is a cure. Over in Africa, there was an outbreak, and there was a, and a scientist studying it, and as he was taking a blood sample from a woman, she broke down and started bleeding out. She started flailing around, and the needle that he was taking the blood with was stuck into him, and the plunger was pushed down. The blood went into his veins. It, w it wasn't until a couple days later when he knew for a fact that she had the particular Zaire strain, which means Without a doubt, he was going to die. He already had headaches and fever, so he knew he had it. So what do you do when you know you're going to die? Well, in his instance, he drank an entire bottle of scotch. Well, then nothing. He didn't die. His symptoms went away. He got better. He was cured. It was a miracle. He later went on to put in his medical reports that the only known cure for a phylovirus, which is what the Ebola is, by the way, the only known cure for a, for a phylovirus is scotch. He put this in as somewhat of a joke, but scientists later went a little in depth and studied it, and because Ebola happens to reside in certain organs like the liver, the pancreas, the kidneys. They believe that drinking an entire bottle of scotch would change the pH of those systems so drastically that it would kill off and, or, and prevent the Ebola infection. Now I'm not saying that you should drink alcohol when you have the flu. That's the bad. <coughs> alcohol is just not as bad as Ebola. Ebola is so contagious that a single touch from an infected person can kill you. Oh! The following is done by trained professionals. Do not try this at home. Oh. Back to Mir's measly minute of medicine. Hey, I like that show. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Well, I guess you came back for some of Mir's mail. Today's mail is sent in by C. Darwin1809, and he asks a few pretty vague questions about Ebola. His first question, what is Ebola hemorrhagic fever? Now, as we've gone over before, it affects humans and other primates. There are five strands of it, so let's move on to your next question. Where is the Ebola virus found in nature? Well, see, Darwin, to be completely honest, scientists don't really know. The virus has such a rapid life cycle that it's virtually impossible to trace back. Now, see, Darwin asks, where do cases of Ebola occur? Well, the thing about that, see, Darwin, is that it occurs everywhere, from Southeast Asia to Africa, and even right here in our own home in Washington, D.C. That answered your question, see, Darwin, 1809. So now we're going to move on to Kitty Chemist 47 and she asks, does my kitten have Ebola? So what are the symptoms of Ebola? Now the thing about that is it's very hard to detect Ebola because its symptoms are very flu-like. You'll get your rashes, you'll get your red eyes, you'll have hiccups. So the treatment for this is, well, there are no official treatments yet. It's hard to detect so it's hard to treat. So if you would like more help, we have a the World Health Organization phone number for you to call, and it is 412-791-2222. Thank you for your time, everyone, and have a good day. Every day I'm shuffling.